So uh, good evening, folks. Uh, welcome to our public participation meeting uh, for the subdivision uh, bylaw amendments. Um, we, uh, we have a few, one person joining us or a couple people joining us via Zoom this evening. So um, when we get going, um, just for an overview. Oh, Jennifer, the um, yep, TV. Ready to start? Uh, yeah, I think that would be great. Okay. So just as an overview, um, we're going to just go through the uh, proposal as uh, we have it outlined at this moment. We'll go through some next steps and then we can take some comments. Um, as an introduction, my name is Kirsten Duncan. I am the planning technician and acting development officer for the town of Kentville. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So our original 2002 subdivision bylaw uh, required um, sidewalks to be built on both sides of the roads for new arterial roads. And um, one, one sidewalk to be built on one side of the road for new collector roads. Yes, sorry. Um, in 2008, our subdivision bylaw was amended, uh, amended to remove the requirement for sidewalks to be built on collector roads altogether. So down below, you can see the excerpt uh, from our subdivision bylaw that outlines what that new language now looks like. So it only requires arterial roadways to have sidewalks, and it's on both sides. As we talk about collector and arterial roads, just an overview as to what types of roads we're looking at. This is the transportation map, map number two of our municipal planning strategy. I know some of the colors maybe aren't coming through as well, so I apologize. Um, but when we talk about collector roads, we have them classified into two separate categories. We have major collector and minor collector roads. Some of these roads are Main and Park Street, Chester Avenue, Cornwallis Street, Belcher Street, Nichols Avenue, and Brooklyn Street. Um, those are our major cl collector. For minor collector, we have Shiloh Drive out in the business park, Acadia Drive, West Main Street, Prospect Avenue, Canaan Avenue, and Oakdean Avenue. And then for arterial roads, we have the Donald E. Hiltz con Connector Road. In 2019, uh, we contracted Upland Planning to do an active transportation plan for the town of Kenville. It's known as Kenville Moves. As part of the plan, Upland Planning provided the town with some policy recommendations to consider, um, and that was just to ensure that our planning documents aligned with the goals and objectives of the active transportation plan itself. One of the recommendations that came out of the active transportation plan was to amend section 2.12 of the subdivision bylaw to require sidewalks on collector roads. Um, you will note that in this section, they do recommend um, sidewalks on both sides. Um, so that does differ a little bit from the recommendation that we're putting forward this evening. So uh, our staff have evaluated our existing bylaw as it stands today, the recommendations from Upland, and we have considered our future plans for development in the town. Um, and we would like to proceed with the following amendment. So uh, the added roads are shown in bold. That would change the, the section of the bylaw. And it would read, sidewalks shall be incorporated into the construction of new arterial and collector roadways as per the following. So arterial roadways, we would like to amend it to only require it on one side of the road. And then collector roadways, we would like to bring back the requirement and then also still keep it at one side of the road as it was in 2002 when we first adopted the bylaw. So as part of this process, um, we have a public participation policy that requires this meeting this evening so that we can get some feedback from the public. Um, and then beyond this meeting, uh, recommendations will go to council for first reading. Um, 
after the first reading happens, we have to put a notice in the paper for two weeks that notifies that we will be having a public hearing where again, we will um, receive some more public comments um, and, and council will participate. Um, and then we will move forward to second reading should, uh, should we continue with uh, the amendments. Um, once we have second reading, we will post a notice in the newspaper stating that um, the decision has been made to amend, and then there are 14 days uh, that anyone can appeal the decision. So that's the outline of the next steps for this process. So for our comments tonight, um, I have received a number of written submissions, and I'll go through a summary of them. Um, and then we'll do uh, a section where attendees can make their comments known. We'll start with our Zoom participants and then we'll move to our in-person participants. Uh, we had a comment from uh, Larry Honey who had noted that um, all new arterial and collector roads should have sidewalks on both sides. And his uh, rationale was to uh, enhance uh, opportunities for physical activity, um, making sure that there we're considering safety um, to connect neighborhoods and um, again, to support personal recreation and health. Um, we had Benjamin Cortens, who might be, yeah, is here in the audience this evening. Um, Benjamin, um, I will do a summary of your comments, but if you wanna come back up and, and reiterate them, you're more than welcome. Um, so generally, it seemed like uh, you were supportive of the amendments. Um, however, you provided a little bit more additional information um, hoping to see sidewalks be amended to separate multi-use pathways and um, requiring more provisions for uh, the requirements for sidewalks. So one of, the, um, one of the lines that was in your submission was wherever arterial or collector roadways connect any residential neighborhoods or large residential populations to destinations such as commercial areas and recreational facilities. Um, and again, with a rationale that encompassed shade and comfort, safety, cost, and accessibility. Jennifer Curry wrote in and generally stated that she was supportive of the amendment, citing pedestrian safety, uh, especially children who are walking to school. Jennifer is concerned uh, about this only applying to new developments and uh, mentioned that um, she would like to see policy for existing streets that meet the definition of arterial or collectors to be considered for uh, potentially um, additional sidewalks. Um, and the last piece of correspondence that we received was from Eleanor Church. Eleanor uh, referenced the AT plan recommendations for sidewalks on both sides of the roads for new arterial and collector roadways. Uh, stating in reference to collector roads that she would prefer to see two sidewalks, but one is definitely better than none. Eleanor stated that the town should make every effort to increase the safe movement of pedestrians and cyclists, citing that a sedentary lifestyle is dangerous to our physical and mental health. And Eleanor also cites pedestrian safety, especially uh, children walking to school and would like to see as many sidewalks as possible. So as of now, that is um, all the written comments that we've received. Um, and we can move on to the Zoom participants. So we have Councillor Andrew Zavian on Zoom. If you'd like to make a comment, you can, but I, I uh, no, Councillor Zavian. Okay, I guess not. Great. Okay. Um, and if anybody from the audience would like to come up and uh, also state their, their comments for this amendment, please feel free. Um, if you could state your name and um, where you live, that would be great. 
Um, and we love to hear your comments. Thank you. so much more intimidating when it was coming in to talk to council. Yeah. <laughs> uh, understandable. Um, so when I was, I wrote that up on the weekend and since then I've been thinking about it a bit more. And I think that there's two sides of it. Um, I'll get to the first one, which is about connecting to destinations. And I mentioned that because I don't necessarily think we should be spending the budget of the town building paths to nowhere um, and paths to places that people can't, are not realistically going to use. So there's that new new minus connector, 11A, I think it is, and they built 11A, and there's provisions for people to walk across it, which I don't know who's going to walk across that because it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and it's, there's probably some codes that require bridges to have paths on them, but it doesn't go anywhere. and. It would be nice if when we're building the new arterials and connectors, like not to build paths that don't go anywhere yet, but leave space for them maybe. Um, because that would make better use of funds, I guess, because like if I'm going down uh, downtown right now, I don't see a lot of people walking along Park Street where the business district is because it's so difficult to get there. And it's like a 45 minute walk to get from downtown to the business if not more. Um, and part of the reason is probably just because it's unpleasant to walk that road, um, not just because it's difficult. Um, the other thing is, I think that there's this concept in our town planning of collectors, main collectors, arterial collectors, and other types of roads. And I don't think it is very well thought out long term. Um, and you see this generally in North America where there's no distinction between roads that are going to be used to move cars from place to place and roads that are going to be used as destinations. Because Park Street up by where all the car dealerships are is constantly clogged with traffic at between like four and six mm -hmm. because it's not just connecting people to the highway, but it's also there's so many people trying to get onto the road. So it's serving two functions. It's trying to be a destination, but it's also trying to be a collect connecting road. And it would be nice if new arterials, for example, the Donald Hills connector when it gets built, mm -hmm. if it was just a road that didn't have any houses on it or anything. Because if it didn't have any houses on it, then it would be easier to build the multi-purpose path farther away from the road for comfort, safety, and whatnot. But also, it would mean that people using it wouldn't be encountering pedestrians and having conflict with pedestrians and bicycles on the road itself. And I know it's not possible because the houses are built, but it would have been nice if long-term people had just built the connectors into downtown were just connectors and then all the houses were on side streets. Mm -hmm. Because if the houses are on side streets with, and with a few key junctions such as roundabouts to get onto them, then you can isolate the pedestrian and cyclist conflicts away from where the main traffic is, which can increase um, public safety, or pedestrian and bicycle safety. Um, yeah. So I do, part of my thinking was that connectors and arterials should just be connectors and arterials, and they shouldn't need a sidewalk on both sides. But if they are gonna be lined with houses, then it does kind of make sense to have sidewalks on both sides, and in that case, it would make more sense to have a wide sidewalk on both sides to keep people who get out of their house on one side able to access it. But if they're not going to have houses on them, which would be preferable when the Donald Hills connector is built, not to have put the houses right on the street, but to put them on little side things, then it would be just fine to have one, just one. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, did you have a question here? You're green. Yeah, sorry. It's just for to be able to pick it up. Um, and Dave, please stop me if I do go a little bit too far. Um, I, I really love what you're saying. Um, our, our intention for right now for the Donald Hilts, especially that arterial road, is to be a, a limited access connector road. 
So there, there will not be driveways and such coming off of it, just those main junction points exactly like you noted. Yeah. Um, so I think that's part of the rationale for us only um, requiring sidewalk on one side of the road on that uh, road specifically because it is the only arterial road at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. um, and then also looking forward to doing more like a multi-use pathway on that road itself so that it can accommodate the, the cyclists and the pedestrians mm -hmm. and it removes them from the road and it's just a whole lot safer. Yeah. Um, so that is definitely what our intention is with that, um, that part of the amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you wanna go? <laughs> I'm I'm sorry that it seems a little bit formal. It, it, by all means, like we just really appreciate your comments yeah, and your yeah, feedback. Sure. I, yeah. I'm more like let's have a coffee chat. Yeah, <laughs> probably I have more questions than than. Well, no, I have a lot of feedback too, but I have so many questions that my feedback would be contingent on what those answers would be in okay. some cases. So we'll go through this. I'll email this to you after. I only got it done this afternoon, so that's why I didn't send it to you before. It's all good. Um, you must be Megan. Yeah, I'm Megan, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I just, I wanted to go through, like, trying to get my brain around, you know, the whole municipal policy world. What are other municipalities doing, mm -hmm. right, to see, like, what do their policies for sidewalks actually look like? And there is some history with some of them that was helpful to see. So that's what I've basically done is sort of like summarize in a table format, like Yarmouth says this, Halifax has this policy, like yep. just to have a reference point. Cause I think when you guys are looking at this as with any policy really, it's helpful to see in comparison. Absolutely. To sort of, you know, Absolutely. Find that happy medium maybe, but it sparked a lot of questions for me. So where to begin? Um, <laughs> the classification of our road system would be in the MPS through the maps, right? Yes, so um, map number two is the transportation map. And so that's the one that says like arterial, collector, yep. and classifies them. Yep. So if at any point a council member or a citizen wanted to petition or somebody to um, potentially amend the classification of one of those roads, is that something that can be done? And I'll tell you why I'm thinking about that is obviously we know Donald Tilton is being developed and there's going to be lots of planning put into what that looks like and the details around that. And there's going to probably be lots of interesting feedback or ideas on what that road could and should look like in terms of like multi-use paths. That's great. But what about the speed on that road? And I think right now in our policies, our arterial roads would be like an 80 kilometer. Like there's a certain bandwidth, like a 50 to 80 or something. And yeah, Dave, maybe you can. That's more of a design speed, Megan, than, a, than necessarily a posted speed. So we would design a road so it has certain curvatures, whether that's horizontal curves or vertical curves, to uh, be designed for a 70 or 80 kilometer an hour design speed. That doesn't mean it necessarily will be posted at that speed limit. It may still be posted at 60 and, and you know enforced as such. But a lot of roads, like the 101, <clears throat> might be posted for 100 or 110. They may easily design that road um, for 120 or 30 kilometers an hour, just so um, folks that do do that, I guess, uh, on say the 101, don't go off the road when they go around a corner and things like that. So design speed is different than necessarily than, than posted speed. Um, we haven't established the actual speed limit for the Hilts Road. It would be probably no less than 60 as a limited access road and probably no more than 70. Um, at 60 may be more appropriate. As Kirsten mentioned, there won't be any really any um, driveway access. It'll only be a limited number of intersections, um, which and and uh, it'll be a, a fairly wide road with a, a center turning lane. Say not unlike New Minus, where you would um, go down the middle if you were if you were trying to queue up to go to go left to turn. Uh, cars could go around you. Right. Um, so that idea of a of an arterial road is is what we're uh, planning for the Hilts Road. Um, but the speed wouldn't be hasn't been set yet, and there's still so some thoughts. The classification of arterial allows you to have that that road that design. Road speed. road design, and then okay. the posted limit being some could be could be lower than the design speed, but uh, that allows it for future. If it, if it needed to be increased, it was designed right to be able to safely drive at 70 without you know sharper curves. Where in a subdivision you, we design at 50, but often you know really <laughs> subdivisions should be, even though the province kind of mandates that. Design, their design speed is 50. 
Um, we can't post less than 50 other than a school zone, even in a residential, although we, you know, we feel 30 is as much as any subdivision should be. But that, uh, hopefully that answers some of your questions. And also, just to add to what Dave said, um, some of those uh, classifications also determine the widths of the right of ways exactly. too for that road. So how much width we ask a developer to turn over to us as part of their development and um, those sorts of standards as well are also um, determined by those classifications. Okay, I have a follow up thought to that, but I see you just oh, in, so. sorry. No, it's all good. Go I am keen to interrupt you to finish your question. No, <laughs> I honestly, I don't have a plan on where I'm going with this. <laughs> um, Do you want to step up to the mic? Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> My main feedback was people don't drive at posted speed limits. They drive at design speed limits. So if you design the road for 70, that's how fast people are going to drive. Yep. And You're even if that's unsafe for the people using, like on the side of the road or anywhere else near it. Sure. And you just said something that was surprising to me. The province dictates the design speed of residential roads, not the town. The posted, so the posted speed. We can't post 30 even though we would like to. Um, they, so provincial road, even though they're town roads, could uh, they be? They couldn't even be designed to thirty, though. Like you couldn't make them. Like you couldn't put speed bumps in and keep the fifty limit there. That 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 in fact does slow traffic. Their traffic calming measures. Yeah. You're absolutely right, uh, Ben. Um, things like sharper turns. Um, we as a town, we do have the ability to um, permit. We'll say sharper corners. We still don't want to have blind corners where things right. where you know you can't don't have visibility for pedestrians or someone walking on a street where there isn't sidewalks. Um, but we do you know have sharper turns than um, certain other municipalities may may enforce that 50 kilometer an hour design speed, which is a, a very large diameter um, or rate or not not diameter but radius I guess yeah. a curve in the road. Um, and in doing so. Does does create sort of a bit of a racetrack like you're suggesting because if it if it is designed for 50 they're going to go at least 50 uh, around some of those corners but if you have the the sharper cor corners or the narrowings uh, for traffic calming or the speed humps of those natures that uh, that does help with the, uh, the traffic calming measures. Okay. Um, but an arterial road is meant to move move vehicles yeah. through um, without pedestrians on the street. We would yeah. only have crosswalks typically at intersections to get to, again, what Kirsten mentioned, we're thinking of a, an AT route that would probably be on the south side, sort of the mm -hmm. high side. If you picture on the, on the Hills Roads, it would be elevated. It would be, you know, two or three feet above the, the travel yeah. lane. So not as high as say the section of Park Street where we're, you know, where, where yeah. the sidewalks a fair bit higher. You, I feel safe on that sidewalk because you're, you're the above the traffic. Road? It's got a, pardon? Which part of Park Street? Park Street between uh, Gladys Porter and and Palmeter, I guess. Eh? That would be the section, oh, yeah, section. you know, where it's you know, sidewalks, um, yeah. a, a large grass strip in width, but also yeah. height. Yeah. So you're you're walking quite a bit above the uh, the traffic yeah. level. You're not right against the road. At that you're not right exactly. against it, but you're also yeah. you're well above it. So even if a car goes off the road, you're 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 that much safer. safer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you got you can put traffic calming measures in. You're not forced to keep them out. We're not forced to keep them out. You know, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be as implemented in an arterial road as they would be right. on a local no, local not. street. I just, yeah, I was just curious because when you said that the province mandates six fifty in residential neighborhoods, I was just, can we do anything? Not the design. And again, the design speed. But we we don't post. We can't even post a thirty yeah. kilometer an hour unless it's a school zone. That, right. That's the only place that in in the province we can post a thirty kilometer an hour speed limit is uh, when children are present. Okay. Um. Oh, you said that the active transit would be on the south side of Donald Hill? Nothing is 100% okay. firm, but that to me is the because it's the elevated side, so you, to, yeah. to go after the, the model sort of of Park Street, where I mentioned where you're, you're walking above the, uh, the travel way, the other side, the north side is just by nature lower than the, like the side, the Acadia, the current Acadia side is lower in nature than yeah. the south it's side, it's uphill. On the hill, yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering, because um, that's actually the name, I live in the Palmer subdivision, so right. um, we walk that trail sometimes, and it's nice to have access with it, and so if it's on the south side, it's gonna be crossing a, a lane of traffic. Um, so speaking to intersections, is there any consideration for doing like modern protected roundabouts, like 
in, instead of just intersections, I guess, just because they move traffic a little better and safer. Roundabouts are certainly, um, you know, um, the new standard really for, yeah. for intersections, or certainly, certainly as a replacement for any type of traffic light. Yeah. Um, they're more effective than lights, they keep traffic moving. Um, certain intersections, there, there may be some key ones, perhaps Acadia or perhaps one of the other ones that will intersect the Hilts Road. Uh, I don't see, you know, probably only see as many as four or five intersections anyway along the full stretch of the Hilts Road. Um, most of them will be four-way sort of, uh, you know. Stop signs four ways or just like open the Stop on the north-south, likely on Through Street on the, most likely on the, on the, um, the east-west of the Hilts Road where it's an arterial road meeting, meeting collector roads or, or local street roads. But mostly there'll be mostly collector roads or minor collectors meeting, meeting the Hilts Road. Um, but that's, you know, certainly that a roundabout isn't out of the question uh, at this point in time. And, and just to kind of make sure that we're keeping us on track here, mm. um, just making sure that we're, obviously the, the design of arterial roads and everything like that is important when it comes to sidewalks, but um, really um, this evening, just focusing on the sidewalks. That's okay. Uh, I Curiosity gets the best of me as well, and I, and I love chatting about this stuff, but yeah, just trying to keep us on the right track this evening. Thank you. Thanks. Um, did you have any comments on the Zoom that you wanted to go to? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to, sh to check with our Zoom participants. I see we have uh, Councillor Zabian, but we also have a mic. Mike, I'm just checking in to see if you had any comments that you wanted to share or if you're just here for viewing. Hi, Jennifer. I'm just here for viewing. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Thank Take you, care. Mike. Um, so to pick up on that, I'm just wondering, in our policies where we have, so we talked about arterial roads have this design, right? Like diameter of roads and slopes and all of that. Are we able to, so this is an amendment for one sidewalk, two sidewalks. Are we able to, in policy, elaborate on those sort of like, I'm imagining like sub bullet points that include provision of details of what those sidewalks look like. So when we talk about like multi-use, maybe it's arterial will include one multi-use trail versus a collector. So I'm just wondering, like, is that something that we have flexibility on in those that type of policy? Can I just quickly, Megan, I'd really love it if you could step to the mic. <laughs> just, it's because we're, know, we're, it's okay. we want to have the viewers at home be able to hear you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we do have further sections within our subdivision bylaw that speak to the sidewalk requirements for the town of Kendall. Um, it definitely talks about minimum widths um, and, and type of surface that the sidewalk is made of. Um, so when, we, when we're discussing multi-use pathways, um, and, and that's section uh, or part eight of the appendix B that we're talking about amending uh, this evening, um, that so when we talk about the width of it, I mean, we can exceed it as a town, whereas we will be the ones developing the arterial road. Um, there could be potential for uh, adding more language in there around multi use pathways, and I think that it might be worth pursuing. Um, but as it stands right now, um, it seems like our priority is making sure that we require them on new collectors so that we make sure that as developers are constructing new subdivisions, that is a requirement that they have to meet. Um, and then also um, with the arterial, um, with our plan to, to design the, the Donald Hilts um, with this multi-use pathway, we feel like we can um, allow for enough room within that multi-use with our own plans um, to accommodate maybe what would have been used with two sidewalks, one on either side of the road. So um, I don't know if that necessarily answers your question, but there are some specifications within our subdivision bylaw that, that might be of interest um, to folks to, to review. Yeah, and I have to be honest with you, I didn't fully go into dice. Oh my goodness, I like, couldn't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I was too busy looking at everybody else's. 
Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that is helpful to know. I'm just thinking because, I mean, we're walking through this experience right now with the um, proposed rezoning and coming face to face with issues might be a strong word, but things that might be missing in our policies. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So um, the forethought, the word forethought's coming to my mind. Like if we could maybe, so this amendment, great, agree, we need to put this forward, but maybe taking a step back from that to say, what additional provisions do we want to include in that as well so that we make sure that we're sort of hitting all the birds at the same yeah. time? Yeah. Um, because as we're experiencing now, it's like we'll have a developer come and do something in the next one to five years, and then things shift, Absolutely. and then we have to amend again. And I'm not saying that, I mean, that's going to continue to happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, these documents are living, breathing documents, yeah. so they, they are meant to be amended when necessary. Um, I think with the development of the Donald Hiltz Collector Connector, I always mess that up, road, um, and... Um, there is the thought to be going through a secondary planning strategy process, which would um, potentially highlight some more policy recommendations. Um, and, and then maybe in the future, our subdivision bylaw is one that's looked at in a little bit more depth um, and, and seeing what else might need to be updated since it has been since 2002 when we adopted that last. So it's over 20 years old. <laughs> So I guess if I could articulate better what I would like to see, that would probably be helpful. Um, if we are able to add an additional provision or sub-provision or clarity in there, I think our arterial roadways should be on both sides or allow for where use of a multi-use trail would be needed yep. and set those specifications of size, for example, right? So multi-use includes a bike path for each way and the 1.5 meter sidewalk for example right yep so that it's clear when somebody is reading that a developer or a town staff person or you know somebody from Truro that's looking at our policy is just to say like that is clear to me because um, I will say like going through other um, subdivision bylaws and other policies in towns like for the most part at least the ones I extracted they were pretty clear clear and specified and that's really helpful because it doesn't leave room for discrepancy right or misinterpretation or one developer to do things one way and one to do another way I guess of course yeah and then for collector roads I'm torn on this one but I do think I mean we're talking about new collector new arterial so I think for that reason I would say I support both sides and that's for the reason of it being articulated in the active transportation and policies and was previous as well. So I just think for consistency sake, um, that would be my take on that. Um, I, I'll email this to you rather than going through it in detail because I, I want to make sure I'm making good value and use of time. But there is some things that I picked up, like in Wolfville, for example, Truro ha actually has a local improvements bylaw, which is really cool. It includes an actual petition that citizens can print to go and apply to the town to you know, sort of back up the change that they want to see made. Risky in some elements, but kind of a cool concept to have available mm -hmm. to, your, to your residents. And they have some provisions in there for um, sidewalks as well. Yarmouth has some good stuff. And then Halifax, I mean, we're talking huge scale here, but they have an integrated mobility plan, which would be not unlike an active transportation plan, for example. And they're very specific in their details, like I say, around what meets these requirements or what they want to see. So um, one thing that I was thinking of, so we're talking about new arterial, new collector, and I think in some of the comments we read too already coming in and we talked about it as what about existing, like mm -hmm. where does that fit into the fold? And really that would probably be, you know, meet Truro's thing or get a petition going and, you know, try to make the case for getting approved to put sidewalks on existing streets. Um, they actually have in their section eight um, where they include a provision for on existing, if, if it was approved by the town or they were deeming that they were going to put a sidewalk on an existing road that wouldn't otherwise have it, that the cost is shared 
50% with the abutting developer and 50% with the town. And I read that and I was like, because you, you know, you got to think about this whole cost thing too. But the fact that they put that in policy was pretty cool to me. Yeah. Um, especially if we're talking about a whole host of potential large scale development agreements coming into the fold with Donald Hills and stuff, right? So and where was that again, Tur sorry? That Tur was the Truro Local Improvements Bylaw. I'll send this to you, it's all, like I, I referenced the sections and stuff for you. I didn't link them though. <laughs> 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 but it got me thinking like, as, as, as you could think through the articulation of some of those details that might be helpful, Things like the cost, a potential cost sharing arrangement would really help protect butts, I guess. Yep. <laughs> you know, if, if you're, if it's in policy, it's kind of, it has to be adhered to more or less, right? Yep. Um, I can pause. No, you're yeah. off. Sorry, it's my day of small speak. <laughs> um, and then one thing I did want to pick up on too. Wolfville, which we see when, when you walk through Wolfville as well, and you actually alluded to it on Park Street, which I didn't, I totally forgot about. So that distance between Gladys Porter yep. and Park, they have in their policy a specific provision for providing that that buffer between pedestrian and um, vehicular. vehicular traffic. Yeah. yeah, and it's it it's required, which I think would be a cool concept to include where that sits on arterial and or collector, I'm not sure, but something to maybe, that I would give you as feedback in terms of mulling over. Um, if I think, so we're in Google Heights, of course, if I think about Acadia and the size of that street, there's a reason that cars move as fast as they do. It's a huge slope street mm -hmm. and it's wide. So even with pedestrians, dogs, strollers, everybody on there, there's a lot of room to move and a lot of room to move fast, mm -hmm. right? So when we think about that collect, I guess that'd be collector road, could be a provision for having it on both sides or when you think, I guess multi-use is, is why, but take that down a notch to where you are inserting that buffer zone if it's required, right? Mm -hmm. So that you have that, you know, Wolfville does have it, they have to actually line it with trees to provide a tree canopy and all of that stuff, but whatever meter that would be of grass patch and then sidewalk because there's a lot of road there to eat up technically yeah but i don't know you dave you would probably know does that arterial road have to stay a certain width right that's a minor collector acadia but um we have no arterial roads besides you know the donald, the existing portion of the donald hills that's in the business park so that's the only arterial road in town right and you don't see developers building arterial roads really it'll be if they're built they're probably going to be built by by us more than likely so um but collectors like whether that's chester avenue as a major or or, or um acadia as a minor um they would be yeah, typically be, be built by a developer um whether that's for subdivision purpose but um yes yeah, so I, I don't see narrowing up the travel width of of acadia but certainly bike lanes on acadia and and better delineation of center line and, and, and bike lane white lines on on, um, on Acadia to sort of narrow up the travel width, but put the, put the bike lanes on, on both sides of the road with the flow of traffic. And then a, uh, you know, a, a sidewalk on one side would be, the, would be the minimum I would like to see on, on a street like mm -hmm. Acadia, but yeah. And I think also that um, that part eight of our subdivision bylaw that speaks to the sidewalk specifications, I think there, there may be um, a provision in there for um, distances from roadways to that sidewalk to provide that buffer. But I, if we do, I think they're very minor. Um, but that might be something that we could review and, and see. Um, I mean, obviously, when we start talking about, you know, tree-lined buffer zones, it comes at a higher cost. And, you know, if you were doing it on an existing roadway like Acadia, for example, there's even higher costs because you're digging up pavement <laughs> to get that in and stuff. Um, but I think it's, I think it would be a good thing to consider, if not for existing, but also for new, um, in a place like that especially, too, because it does provide, with stormwater management, has just been like this recurring conversation <laughs> over and over every month but you know natural filtration methods also exist through that and and again like i think it 
I mean, it does have the space along the width of that road, which the new development would ha keep that same width all the way to Donald Hill, yeah, right? Yeah, it's not that has, narrowed up. That's the intention is it would be the width that it is now, right from basically right from well, where the boulevard is at the entrance of Acadia, uh, you know, it's sort of two lanes by the boulevard. Right. But once once you get in, in past uh, the, the entrance of Acadia, it's, it's the, oh my gosh, I think it's like 36 feet wide from, from curb to curb but it is all the way up to where, where the pavement ends today. You know, it's a consistent width of, right. of uh, 10 or 11 meters, I think 11 meters from, or, or 36 feet from curb to curb, which leaves lots of room for, you know, two bike lanes. But, um, you know, we would like to see a sidewalk off street, you know, mm -hmm. on, uh, on the current grassed mm -hmm. area, because we, we own roughly 12 feet, I think on both sides of the curb as part of the street limit. I mean, it's, it's uh, it's grass that that uh, residents mow, you know, and and think of their own. But really, that's that's town right of way as well. So even beyond the curb, that's still town land. On you know where the where the light poles are and the the uh, underground electrical boxes, boxes and things. That's that's all part of the street limit. So that's I think a 20 meter wide street limit. So yeah, 10 meters that's either that's side of center. Large. It's interesting because the lights, I think, are on one side and then the electrical boxes. They're kind of, they're kind of uh, back and forth a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Lights are all on one side, but there's, there's definitely um, underground boxes on both sides. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I wrote it. You'll see when I send this to you. I wrote at the bottom just like the details in the table in terms of where to pull things from, and then my last box is my summary of recommendations that I was like, here's my uneducated opinion on <laughs> what I would do with all of this. I'll just read that to you, and then I'll, I'll step aside. So. Um, I put remaining consistent with the recommendations from the 2019 uh, Kentville Active Transportation Plan and bylaws from other municipalities. It's recommended that sidewalks be included on both sides of new, new arterial and collector roads. In addition, the following should be included within the amendment to some degree. And again, we kind of chatted through like, I don't know if we can do that, yeah. but you know, sub policies are what that looks like um, to ensure a full capture of minimum requirements. So. I'd like to see some sort of, not precedent, but yeah, the minimum set so that we can sort of ensure that consistency is being applied through um, new developments. And then, of course, your uh, existing streets um, going up to speed so that we don't have those sidewalks in nowhere and, you know, all of that stuff. So um, my three points were any new arterial and collector roads that meet the requirements for requiring sidewalks on one or both sides. Um, are, and are accessed by existing arterial collector or collector roads exclusively will be required to include new sidewalks through the existing roads as well to avoid as to avoid sidewalks to nowhere, as I just mentioned, and to ensure the safe movement of pedestrians is achieved as per the MPS, uh, Kentville MPS and the promotion of active means of movement um, is viable following the recommendations of the 2019 transportation plan. Um, where proposed new development of arterial and collector roads is exclusively, sorry, are exclusively accessed by and prolonged off of existing arterial and collector roads, and as such requires installation of sidewalks on one or both sides of the street, the cost, so this is pulling off the Truro's example, the cost of sidewalk installation and associated buffers on pre-existing roadways shall be shared by the developer at 50% in the town by 50% through the subdivision and development approval process. So that's just my idea of saying like, hey, I mean, McDougal Heights is the easiest example right now talking yeah. about that Acadia Drive. How can we require a developer or future developers, you know, through Donald Hiltz to still want to develop, but also be on board with making sure our services continue through the town, given that that's a main access point. And feeder to school, feeder to recreation facilities, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Um, in all newly constructed arterial and collector roads, all sidewalks be built with an integrated buffer division. I, re I really do like that for a number of reasons that I mentioned. Um, separating sidewalks from roadways on existing arterial and collector roads receiving new sidewalks and where the width of the road allows the same provision of an integrated buffer division separating sidewalks and roadways to be constructed. Um, I think at one of the recent council meetings, I feel like CAO Trope mentioned the urban forest bylaws not going through or it's already addressed somewhere, so this might not be relevant. 
don't call me. <laughs> but I did write, um, consider integrating it with urban forest policies. I mean, they would be in the NPS anyway. Um, and land use bylaws to provide for street trees with regular spacing to continuous, to provide a continuous street tree canopy as they grow up, much like Wolfville. Um, this will add visual appeal, shade, privacy, and safety provisions to promote safe movement of pedestrian and vehicular traffic. Um, this will also encourage on-site stormwater management practices, infiltration, capture, and reuse of uh, through landscaping elements. And then lastly, I wrote, include provisions within the amended policy that details minimum requirements to meet accessibility targets for the town. As examples, in include minimum tactile walking targets for those with visual or mobility impairments bump outs for indication of crosswalks for vehicular traffic, again, much like we see in Wolfville and other municipalities. I really think this is a great opportunity to start getting those minimums in there in our policy so that we know that they're going to be adhered to and not leave, not leave room for us to have to go back as staff or as a council or as residents to say, by the way, we need to make this change because it does that, that, that. If yeah. we know that we want to include, for example, at the crosswalk, a bump out with Thank you Thanks, very Debbie. much um, for your comments. We really appreciate it. Um, any more comments? Yeah? <laughs> Hello, uh, Gary Cleveland, 25 Acadia Drive. Um, I really didn't get to go through that report, but uh, I believe it stated that this uh, road, connector road, will be prospect to the industrial park, is that correct? At this point in time, yep, that is the plan. Well, uh, I would be one here to say we just be causing a huge problem for Cayman, for Chester Avenue, or I'm sorry, Prospect Street. I mean, it's just impossible. I can imagine directing the traffic, big trucks, everything up through by the church, up the hill, can't happen. Okay, so before you even consider this, I believe you have lands that run from Prospect to Chester Avenue. Do we? No? There are lands. Um, that we own or no? In the, in the area that we own, uh, uh, Gary, the, they wouldn't be, uh, the grades wouldn't be suitable to, to, to connect the two roads together. from. See, from a so to, to me, that's impossible until that's correct. I don't know your thoughts, but uh, you just think about it a little bit. And uh, I, the uh, one sidewalk, I, I'm with that. On the collector road. On the on the collector, yeah. And uh, uh, and he's, Mr. Bell stated there is a raised portion, and that becomes nice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about what we're going to create for the developer say from the end of Acadia for one and lots of others, the cost that's going to incur, you know, like to today the building lots are $100,000 pretty easy and we're looking for affordable housing. It'll never happen. You know, the road costs will be just make it, if uh, a wish list is nice. But you know, that's Christmas time in my mind. Uh, we have to go while we work and keep our cost in line. You know, uh, I just know little business we have over town and, and my home taxes and $25,000 a year almost. You know, that's, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. You know, it gets pretty costly to run. So I think we gotta watch our dollar and not just uh, make it safe, watch our dollar and uh, that's it. Good luck on your project, but I'd look on getting some land to be able to run from Prospect to Cain to Chester Avenue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any? No, we're good. No. No. no one. Okay. Um, sure. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to echo the. I think it would be a really good idea to connect to Chester because. One thing that's really kind of <coughs> unnecessary right now is everybody who needs to go to North 
Kentville has to go through downtown. Everybody who needs to go from uh, the east side to the west side has to go through downtown. And if it connected to Chester, it would make it easier to get around downtown without causing traffic in places where people are trying to accomplish actual things like going to a business or going to their house. Um, something that you said reminded me of something. If we're only going to have one side of things, and I mentioned this earlier about having no houses on arterials, is it possible to um, think about having future collectors not have houses on them? Because I'm thinking of the way that Acadia is being planned to be a collector. I'm not sure what it's collecting from exactly, but all if everyone who lives in the Palmer McDougall area goes up to that new Donald Hiltz connector to get out of town rather than going through downtown, um, that's not too many people and that's very local traffic. But if the people coming up Acadia are people coming from Park Street from other parts of town, that's going to be a lot more traffic than is currently on Acadia. Um, which poses a risk to the way people use Acadia because people don't, and part of something that I would like to see is that, and this does bit play into sidewalks, I promise. So, <laughs> um, is a focus on thinking about how we plan our town to move cars versus people versus bikes and not taking away residential streets from the people who live on them. And by turning residential streets into collectors, you take them away from the people who live on them because the people who live on Acadia use Acadia to play. That like There's always children on Acadia. Well, okay, there's always children when I go walking on Acadia um, at five in the afternoon. Um, but there's often children playing on Acadia and turning it in, into a higher traffic road would put more people on it and take it away from the people who actually live there. Um, and, I th and just putting sidewalks there doesn't, provide for those children who currently use the whole street to play, um, the ability to continue to play there. And just putting bike lanes in also, it doesn't really provide for people who walk on the street either. Because right now, um, we walk our dogs every day on the street, usually during tick season. So um, when we're walking our dogs, we're always, we're constantly crossing back and forth but on, on the side of the street we're on because there's often other dogs and often you don't wanna have a lot of dogs getting together when you're walking them on the street. So by, cont by turning residential streets into collectors like this, there's, if there's a chance of high enough traffic, it becomes difficult to do that quick cross. Right now, one of the great things about the McDougal, Acadia, Palmer area is how low traffic it is because you do see people using the streets to play, to go walk, to exercise. But if there's a lot more traffic going to be on that street, I worry that it's going to take away from its use by the people who actually live there. Um, I think one thing, one point, um, thank you for your comments. I appreciate that. Um, one thing that I would just like to know is that um, Acadia Drive has been deemed a collector since it started to be developed, which is the late 80s. Um, so I just want to make sure that I clarify that um, because it has been identified on our planning documents since that mm -hmm. time as, as being a collector, um, but I do understand where you're coming from with your comments. I'm just, so when we're planning for sidewalks, we're planning to connect people, right? Like it's for residents and pedestrians and such. And if our, like I've looked at the active transit plan and what would be what I've seen in places that aren't North America is they build they try and make their networks separated so the car traffic is separate from the people traffic so they have roads typically don't have a lot of houses on them um, except where they're actually designed to be residential roads and so they can have really low speeds and the roads the residential roads don't tend to be collectors they tend to be um, places where people uh, live and just get around on their bikes or they're walking. And their town designs tend to have uh, a focus on keeping those uses separate. And while the active transit plan does a little bit of this, um, I noticed that one thing in it was that we put a bike path on um, Park Street. 
but it would be nicer if the bike path could be on the residential streets off of Park Street because it keeps their lower traffic, so there's less chance of pedestrian and or not pedestrian, cyclist and car collision. So, um, is it possible to specify that future collectors might be lower density for housing or no housing better? Because and collectors. I'm not sure how feasible that is because I'm not sure how many new collectors are planning to be built um, and what the long-term plan is for traffic management more generally because I think that that plays into planning for sidewalks because if you're planning to mostly divert cars around the downtown core, the sidewalk needs aren't as great as it and around streets in general. If you're diverting traffic around where people are actually going to be moving around the destinations. You don't have as much of a need for sidewalks on both sides in that case. Does that make sense? Am I being clear? Do you have any clarification needed? Yeah, no, um, I, think I, I think I get where you're coming from. Um, again, um, they're within that section of, uh, I think it's part two of our subdivision bylaw. There are some descriptions on, on the road classifications and what the intention is for them. So, um, yeah, I, I think that we, um, we could consider looking at that. Um, but I think ultimately most of our collector roads um, do have um, numerous residential properties that abut them. Um, so... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just not sure how, how likely it is that we wouldn't allow for residential development on collector roads, but um, yeah. I, I'm just thinking that it'd be, if the future transit plans are to have people not drive, try to get people out of their cars and drive, walking downtown more and biking downtown more, um, it would be, if we're, I don't even know where we'd build a collector, but it would be nice kind of, in my dreams where I think about how we could draw on Kentville, it would be nice to have like a loop around downtown still in that's still in town that would allow people not to have to go downtown and would uh, keep them off of all of the residential streets and off of all of the main streets because downtown has so much traffic going through it that isn't actually stopping there. They're not frequenting the businesses. They're not actually doing anything downtown. Um, but they're not gonna go around downtown because it's so much slower because any street that is a collector that has houses on it isn't gonna be a faster way to get around. It's just gonna be the same speed, just a more roundabout route. Um, okay. yeah. I know that there's only one planned arterial and that it's planned to be low, low at access, but um, long-term thinking, like, is it possible that we could start to slowly, as the town grows, um, see more need for getting around without having everybody just use the existing collectors and connectors. Um, because that high den higher density development proposed for Acadia would lead to a lot more cars coming into that area. Whether they'd be going through the Donald Hills connector or not is, um, it depends on whether or not they can get in through Prospect, I think. Uh, prospect to Chester because if they can't do that, they're probably just going to go down Park Street and up Acadia. Okay, thank you. Well, I think um, I think that pretty much wraps up our public participation meeting. Um, I really appreciate you all coming out, and thank you to our Zoom participants. Um, and uh, look forward to the next CAC and council meetings for the, the next steps in this process. So thank you again, really appreciate your time uh, this evening and your comments.